To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Please stand clear of the doors. For favor, we thank you for the so today on Miles from Main Street, we are talking the holidays at Walt Disney World. We're not just doing the holidays as in Christmas, but we're going to talk Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Uh, and to do that, I brought Melissa Pilgrim our travel agent extraordinaire uh, to help us out with this uh, time period it can be pretty busy and um, she's going to have all the great tips for us. So before we get into it, please go out and subscribe, share and review the podcast. Uh, it would really help us out. Um, and it's something that you can do without, you know, having to dive into that wallet of yours. So um, that'd be great if you can do that. Also, I need to give a quick shout out to Van Obi-Wan. He sent us an email asking us to do a uh, a quick podcast episode about um, about Genie Plus and at not just Disney World, but also Disneyland. And so we are going to do that on a future episode when I can get Mikhailo back here. Um, but until then, Van, thank you so much for listening and thank you for the feedback and the suggestion. Uh, that sounds like a great episode and I can't wait to do it. So, Melissa, good morning. How are you doing? Morning. Good. I'm glad it's Friday. Yes, me too. Um, we have a little bit of summer left, but they are celebrating Halloween down in Disney World already and you guys are back to school so it's kind of an interesting time already yeah I know it's like fall but not fall <laughs> <laughs> still, still hot, very hot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um so let's let's talk about this Halloween party uh I've been there a couple of times and it's always enjoyable I really enjoy the decorations that they do in the Magic Kingdom um the party, though, is kind of the highlight of the season, and they kicked it off August 11th, and it looks like most of September is sold out at this point. Um, yep, um, everything until September 19th so far. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So that went quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, it looks like then if you're buying something after September 19th uh, through November 1st, and uh, Halloween is already sold out October 31st. So um, many dates, though, within there. It looks like it's almost every other day. And uh, those prices are going to run you anywhere from $149 to $199 a ticket. And you, get, you can get a discount on those tickets if you are DVC or if you're an annual pass holder. Yeah, I think it's 5 to $10. Um, it's been between those two every year, so... A okay. Bit helps helps them, it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, a little bit helps anywhere, right? right? Um, yeah. So here's what I know: getting into the party, the two times we did it, we spent the entire day at Magic Kingdom and then rolled right into the party. Um, and we've always been open to close type people with the park, so we were pretty wiped when. Yeah, it's a long day. It is a very long day. Uh, so my recommendation is to take the time to sleep in, enjoy your pool, um, enjoy the resort, grab a meal somewhere, uh, and then head over and get in at four o'clock. And you know you can do a few things before the party actually starts at seven o'clock. And then you can, you know, be refreshed and ready to go for the party, which I think you really want to maximize that time. So um, there's so much to do. Uh, Melissa, is there anything that you would start with when you first walk in? I recommend talking to everyone who you're going with and seeing what your priorities are. Because some people want to ride rides. Personally, if you're there for the party, you want to do the trick-or-treating if you have all the little kids um, or picking one of one or two of your top Halloween character meet and greets because those lines get really long the longer the party goes on. So if you yeah. 
figure out who you want to see and get in line right when that party starts. So then you can kind of get through with the line and then enjoy the rest of the party. So I've seen, and this is one thing that we're looking at when we go to the Christmas party, but I've seen that the all seven dwarves are meeting together, but that line has been up to three hours. Yeah. I don't know that I can do that. <laughs> Me and my kids could not. <laughs> That's a long time to wait. Now, I know it might get shorter as night goes on, um, and we're into the first couple of parties here, but... Yeah, three hours, and I think people are jumping in line as soon as they're in the park. Um, which So some of that wait time is just that they haven't started yet. Yeah. I mean, I know Jack and Sally are always one of the top wait attractions, I guess we can call them. Yeah, and so like you said, like you really need to prioritize what you want to do. Um, and, you know, when we went to Disneyland back in February, we completely messed up on that. Um we didn't realize what we were getting into, I guess. And I kind of thought we'd be able to do everything. Um, but yeah, you really need to prioritize what you want to do. Just like you would any day in the park. It, this party used to be something that you could just waltz in and do a lot because a lot of people weren't there. You know, our first party was 2012. And that's why we went back is because there was nobody in the park at that point and we had so much fun running around um we met jafar which he doesn't usually meet with people except for the party and we all thought that was a really cool meet and greet line wasn't very long so it was nice that we were able to do that one but um yes the the dwarfs and and jack and sally are long any other ones that i'm missing there's a elvis stitch Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, Winnie the Pooh, friends, they, they were in their costumes. Oh, that, and you usually get at least three, maybe four of them, right? Um, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so, you know, that's kind of one of the cool things about the party is, is getting to do those meet and greets. Um, but there's also other great parts of the party that you need to pay attention to and the first one would be the parade i this might be the best parade that they put on in the park yeah, um it's very long i think it, well not very long but it's long and you get a lot of characters in it um my favorite is the grave diggers when they come through uh they're twirling shovels and scraping scraping them on the ground um but you get so many cool characters and this year they even added Minnie, Daisy and Clarabelle as the Hocus Pocus uh, witch sisters uh, and they look awesome I think those are so cute <laughs> uh, Hocus Pocus and a side note to that uh, people that listen may realize that I'm a fan of um, Horace Horsecollar because you don't see him very often but that got him into the parade because they needed to replace um, Clarabelle and they put Goofy in a new section, and, you know, it just kind of shook up the, you know, adding those sisters, that really shook up the parade a lot. So um, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. And it's nice that it, um, it normally runs twice, as long as there's not any weather that kind of cancels it. Yeah. Uh, the second parade is generally less crowded if you can make it that long into the night. Which the second grade starts at eleven fifteen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's a really good tip. If you can make it that late, hit the second one. Um you know, and like you said, there might be weather issues, so you have to be cognizant of that because they could cancel that second parade. Um so you have to pay attention to what the weather might do. Yeah, I think the one year that we went, um, it started like pouring during the first, the, the time the first parade was supposed to start. So they delayed it. Um, I think it was delayed maybe like an hour and a half. And then they ended up doing it in the rain. Um, but they only ended up doing one, one parade that night. Okay. So yeah, the weather, especially with those parades, um, can really affect it. Yeah. And if you can, if you start to watch the parade back near Frontierland, It'll be over first 
you know, it, it gets to you first. Yeah, the we're on uh, Main Street. Yes, yeah, so you don't have to wait as long for it then. Um, that's a great tip. And that's how we watched it. And then we followed the crowd up to the Haunted Mansion and the line wasn't too bad at that point. So um, kind of a fun way to do it. I always, you know, we've always gotten stuck on that side of the park for these parties and we haven't spent a whole lot of time over in Tomorrowland, um, but they do have other things going on over there too. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so then, you know, like they do a fireworks show. Um, I want to say that one's probably 10 or 1030 that they run that. Um, I did catch a little bit of video of that recently for this year's show. And it seems like they've, I don't know if they've added more fireworks or I kind of missed the, what they were doing, but they had a lot of big fireworks kind of around you. And I was disappointed because the first time I went, they had fireworks going basically 180 degrees around the castle. So yeah. if you're standing in the hub, like it was blown up all over around you and it like it was really cool. Um, if I had the video from 2012, which, you know, storage back then was a little more difficult on a cell phone, <laughs> but <laughs> you would audibly hear me going, oh, my gosh, because it was just overwhelming how much explosions was going on. Um, but, you know, they they've d toned that down a little bit, but it still looks really cool the way they're doing it, um, at least in the finale. Yeah, and another little thing um, that I, I think is fairly new, um, during the fireworks show, they've been using a Jack Skellington puppet on um, the stage. So you can't, you have to, you know, you have to kind of camp out a little bit to get a good spot to get really good views of that. But if, you know, you are a really big Nightmare Before Christmas fan, Jack Skellington fan, that's kind of something that's different, I guess, to see the puppet. Yeah, that's a good point. That puppet looks really cool, but it, it's like 12 feet tall or something. <laughs> it's crazy how they do that. Um, yeah, I, I don't know that I like the story of the fireworks as much, but they still have a really good show, and it's definitely something you do not want to miss. Um, so other things within the party, uh, they have trick-or-treat stations all over the park. Um, they would give you handfuls. Now they have scoops that they might give you two scoops even of candy. And I know some of the vloggers were walking out with four or five pounds of candy in those small bags. And <laughs> you can take bigger bags if you want and fill up your bucket with candy. <laughs> um, it's sponsored by mars so you're getting m&ms and uh snickers maybe i i not too well versed on mars candy selection but you know you're getting a lot of good chocolate from from that company um and they do have allergy friendly options as well um they'll give you like a blue chip at each station and then at the end of the night you can go to i think city hall and get uh, the allergy friendly options for all of those different tokens you pick up. Yeah, I think they've added a couple different stations around the park. Um, it's in case you you don't want to wait to to turn in a token. You know, sometimes as little kids are like, wait, I only have tokens. I need I need my candy now or my my treat now. So they did add some more. Um, I don't have a map of where they're at, but they can um, redeem those before the end of the night. Oh, that's cool. Because, um, I, yeah, I think it did only start with City Hall. But uh, as you say that, I bet one of them is in Liberty Square because I feel like there is a station there to pick up um, your wristband as well. Yeah, there's a um, like um, guest services. It's kind of right next to the Hall of Presidents behind the Waffle, Waffle House. <laughs> Sleepy Hollow. I love that place. <laughs> I always want to get food there, but it's just never the right time of day for a waffle. <laughs> <laughs> Try that spicy chicken one if you can handle spice. That one's good. I love spice. Um, I've been known to get the fruit and wa fruit and Nutella waffle any time of day. You just have to ask for it. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's uh it's a great party. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Well, there's a couple things that I wanted to add that 
Um, I know a lot of people go to the party for the trick-or-treating, the costumes, the parade, meeting the characters, but there's a few rides that have a little bit different, I guess, overlays, I guess we can call them, during the party. So um, Space Mountain will be pitch black during the party. So if you ride it, there's no no lights. It's all pitch black just during the party. And also Pirates of the Caribbean will most of the time have live actors in the queue and during the ride, which is kind of a neat feature, having pirates, walk, real pirates walking around. Well, real. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then for the little kids, um, it's good to go to the Storybook Circus over by Dumbo, um, do the Disney Junior Jam. They can trick or treat and they can dance with some of the um, Disney Junior characters. Oh, cool. I didn't know that happened over there. Uh -huh. It's kind of a hard little place. You don't really kind of off way back in the corner kind of, but yeah. So Fancy Nancy, Vampirina. I think they do Doc McStuffin still. Very cool. Yeah, like I said, I didn't know that one was going on. I know like Stitch was doing the dance party, I thought, um, in Tomorrowland. Yeah, I think he does. That's where he's at. Yeah. Um, we've come upon some of those dance parties here and there, and it's so much fun to see the kids dancing with the characters. And as I've said, um, kids have two types of energy to me. One is just the energy it takes to maybe walk through the park and and be good kids and, and do everything that you ask them to do. But then they also have that second type of energy, which I can tend to call wiggle energy. And it's just like they need time to wiggle or be spontaneous. And these dance parties really give them the chance to do that. So yeah. wiggle I, out the energy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. I didn't realize there was a Disney Junior one going on back there. Now, I don't know if it runs until, you know, midnight, but they might stop it a little bit early, but it does. It is there for the littler, littler fans. Awesome. Um, and I did realize what I was forgetting, and it's the stage show. And this is a stage show in front of the castle, and it's the Hocus Pocus Spectacular. Mm. Um, and the Sanderson sisters come out, and they need to make a potion, and... As part of doing that, they need to call upon all of the Disney villains to come out and help them with the potion. So you get to see Oogie Boogie and Maleficent and the Evil Queen and, you know, all these villains that come out and help them make their potion. It's a great show. Again, they do that more than once a night. Um, and the best time to go is right at midnight. They do a show right at midnight as they close. So you get to stay a little bit later if you're up that late. And um, enjoy that. There's usually a smaller crowd, so it's easier to get up close. I've seen vloggers walk right up to it and get up near the stage right at midnight. So um, it's a good way to maximize your time. Yeah, I think it runs three or four, uh, three to four shows, depending on, I guess, the night, like the week. I think the week day nights, they probably just do three. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. And those aren't, are those, is that um, Minnie, Daisy, and Clarabelle doing it? Or is it the real Sander Sanderson sisters? This is the real Sanderson the real, sisters. The real yeah. Um, I, I like that idea, though. I think it would be a lot of fun to see uh, Minnie and Daisy and, and Clarabelle doing them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, kind of flip it on the the other side and have all the friends come out and help them with something. That'd be kind of cool. So a lot of good stuff with Hall the Halloween party. The decorations are up all day long, and you can check those out as you come in um, any day of the week um, now through November. and Well, not through November, but through October and into November. Um, lots of pumpkins, scarecrows, uh, you know, they, I love all the pumpkins that they put up on Main Street because some of them have little things going on that tell a little bit of a story. Um, of course, the most famous one is the restroom one that's pointing where the restrooms are. 
Anything else you want to add about Halloween? No, I mean, it's just my favorite party. It's my favorite season. Um, I'm a, October 29th is my birthday, so it's always spooky season has always been my favorite thing. Um, one thing I would recommend, it's not too late to go this year, but it's kind of getting too late to start thinking about planning to go this year. So if you want to go for Halloween, plan early. Um, I'd recommend booking your room even maybe before the tickets are released. And once those tickets do come open, don't wait, don't wait to book them. Um, I've had people reach out before saying, oh my God, I forgot to book my tickets and now the dates are sold out. There's always a chance that you can walk up the day of and get some tickets for a sold out party, but it's not guaranteed. And you have to be at Magic Kingdom as soon as they open to inquire. So just don't wait if you want to go. And I'd recommend going. <laughs> it's a great party. <laughs> it really is a great party. We have sent um, some friends of ours in the past when they're heading down there and they've always thanked us for telling them about it. So something you don't want to miss. Outside of Halloween, we might have some people heading down at Thanksgiving. I wanted to touch on that um, because I always see questions about where can we get a Thanksgiving meal? How can we celebrate Thanksgiving? Um, and I know Liberty Liberty Tree Tavern offers, um, as part of their menu, a Thanksgiving-style me uh, meal any day of the year. Mm -hmm. So that's always the first one that gets thrown out for people. Um, but I know dr that day that a lot of the table service restaurants will have some sort of turkey option or Thanksgiving meal option on their menu. Um, what you know, I, I was hoping to get some info from you, Melissa, on how to handle the crowds because it's really busy during that weekend and any other ways they could celebrate Thanksgiving. Well, I've had this question before because I've had a few clients go over Thanksgiving and the past few years and they are like, where can we get where can we get Thanksgiving dinner? Um, aside from Liberty Chew Tavern, which is the main choice, you can eat Thanksgiving there. 365 days a year. <laughs> but, um, Diamond Horseshoe also opens, which is right next to it. The past few years, it's been getting increasingly easier. I think Disney has realized, hey, people are here over Thanksgiving. They want to eat a Thanksgiving meal. Um, in the past, there would be like maybe a handful of different restaurants scattered throughout the property. Normally, all of them being um, table service restaurants. But I did a little researching, and it looks like last year um, you could pretty much get a Thanksgiving plate from almost every restaurant on property, it seemed. Uh, I oh, stopped wow. writing them down because it was just <laughs> almost all of them. <laughs> I mean, um, Garden Grill, Beer Garden, Coral Reef, uh, Sunshine Seasons, Brown Derby, pretty much every um table service restaurant has a plate or a menu or items on their buffet on Thanksgiving day. Even uh, Fort Wilderness, they have a gobbler sandwich, which is kind of like your day after Thanksgiving sandwich, Everything yeah. kind of piled onto one if that's your thing. Um, and it even said a lot of the food courts at the values will have a turkey plate on Thanksgiving. So oh, perfect. Yeah. You know, my tip was going to be, if you're going, make sure you're on there um, 60 days out making your reservation because a lot of those places would book up, but you don't really need to do that if you can get it anywhere now. Yeah. I mean, even it's a uh, restaurantosaurus, Tiffin's, Satuli Canteen even has like a Thanksgiving bowl that you can get on Thanksgiving. Oh, I want that. That um, sounds good. <laughs> you know, even um, at the resorts. So Boma, Jico, Sanaa, Mara, all of them. I mean, I just, I was like, I can't write down every <laughs> restaurant. But there's a lot. So I guess they realized, hey, people want to eat Thanksgiving. <laughs> they want to eat their meals. So, so that's definitely nice that they've done that for sure. Um, yeah. So would you recommend going to the park on Thanksgiving Day? 
I mean, I would. I mean, what else do you do on Thanksgiving besides eat and, you know, maybe watch football? So I think the parks are fun any day of the year, personally. I mean, there's a couple days that are a little too busy for my liking, but I think Thanksgiving would be a good day to go. Okay, awesome. I've always told people to avoid that weekend, but, um, you know, they're always looking for the lowest time to go, so... um, Sounds like it's still a great time to go, though. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to be slow. I mean, there's lots of locals that, you know, they eat their meals with their families and then head to the park. But I think being in there on, out during an actual holiday has a different vibe. People seem to be friendlier, in my opinion. I guess you can always come across people that aren't as nice, but. I always I, I always enjoy being in the park. I try to smile at everybody, say hello if... Um, if I'm waiting in line by somebody and, and just, you know, everyone's on vacation, you should be having a good time. So. Yeah. Uh, Um, Another little tip, which we kind of stumbled across it uh, a few years ago, we planned a last minute trip over Thanksgiving. Uh, We had just moved back to Florida from being in New York for a few years and we splurged and booked club level at boardwalk. And we were there over Thanksgiving and, we booked it maybe two weeks before going and there was no reservations for anything to eat. Um, yeah. People service meals for Thanksgiving, but we, the club, the club lounge had like a whole spread. I mean, they had a carved Turkey. They had someone carving Turkey. Um, they had green beans and stuffing and pumpkin pie. So it, I think all the club levels do a, special dinner service for for thanksgiving and probably christmas as well that's totally worth it there yeah yeah um i've often looked at club level and and dreamt about it (laughs) (laughs) we're just trying to get into the deluxe resorts right now and and stay at a few of them so that'll probably be our next step when we don't have to take as many kids with us yeah (laughs) <laughs> well when you take your kids though then i mean they kind of make up the difference because they eat a lot and they can just stop by the club and get their snacks and drinks and that's dinner. a good point that's a good point i don't know we're doing po- you know as you know we're doing poly in march and i don't know we'll have to talk about maybe upgrading <laughs> we'll talk about that have, there's I'll talk to you privately about the Paul of the Museum Club level. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe upgrade another time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's just a very, very busy one. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, it's a busy resort too, so. Yeah. All right. So Thanksgiving, of course, falls in the middle of the Christmas celebrations. They have Christmas decorations up all over the resort. Um. Let's maybe talk about, though, the Christmas party that's going on at Magic Kingdom first. It'll start November 9th and go through December 22nd. Um, Select nights, of course. Uh, As I'm glancing over these dates, I won't read them all off, but it looks almost to be every other day again, some in consecutive days. But tickets will range anywhere from $159 to $199. And... uh, you know, you kind of get the same type of deal as you would get with the Halloween party, just Christmas themed. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. I mean, you don't get bags of candy, but they do have treats stations sprinkled throughout the park for sure. Yeah. And you can get cookies usually. And what I like about it now is it seems they've prepackaged a lot of those cookies. Um, So now instead of a bag full of candy, you can fill your bag full of cookies. (laughs) Um, And you get hot hot chocolate or juice or um, some sort of drink along with your cookie, um, which I think is a nice little touch. Um, The meet and greets, are those pretty much the same people? Um, mostly, I mean, they aren't dressed up in costumes so much, I guess, but you have Santa Claus, 
Santa Goofy. Um, Seven Dwarfs are still there. Jack Skellington's still around, but he's Sandy Claus. Um, nice. So. Awesome. So there's there's the plenty of people to meet. Um, and again, I'm sure those lines will be crazy long. Uh, people want to do that instead of the rides. So if you end up wanting to prioritize rides, you usually get the short lines in these parties. Um, but, you know, we've we've talked about the meet and greets, the treats, uh, the parade. I really enjoy the parade uh, for Christmas. Um, the music is really fun and, and celebratory, and um, they've got some really cool items in there. I think the ones that stand out to me is the Toy Soldiers. Uh -huh. um, I love that they have them in there. Uh, it's a great parade. Now, I believe when they get on Main Street, that parade, when it's going through, it'll it'll snow on Main Street at that point. Yeah, they do have snow on Main Street or snope. So snow fall as your as the parade starts getting towards the end. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to watching this parade, like. For Halloween, we said, you know, maybe it's really good to start in Frontierland, but is it, do you want to be up in on Main Street for this one? I guess it depends on if you want to see the snow or not. I mean, we do, for easiest viewing, we do think Frontierland because you get the beginning. And then if you are doing the first parade and want to get, get the parade over and then get back into the party if you are back in Frontierland, it'll get to you first, it'll be over first, and then you can move on your way. But to get the full effect, I think, of the parade on Main Street would be the best location to, to view it from. Okay. Just because, you know, all the lights are lit up and the garland, and the snow. It's a lot more festive than nice. Mm -hmm. Um. And now this, so to be up there, you're probably going to need to get there a little earlier to get a spot. Yeah, because it's just not a lot of room on Main Street, and they don't let you take over the entire sidewalk. Um, they have to have some path going. Okay. So there's really only room for maybe two people deep down, okay. down the parade. So I would probably get there about 30 minutes before it started. Um. So... I think the, the Snope is only going to go along Main Street itself, but not really up around Town Square, right? Right, because I, I think it comes, they they have the projection, however it comes out, um, on the rooftops, just kind of yep. that straight, straight away on Main Street. Okay, so they're, they're still doing two parades, um, and the second one would be recommended again, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's still less. It's going to be less crowded because the second one's around eleven. First one should be about eight thirty. Okay, perfect. And then um, they do a the fireworks again. Um, I haven't liked this show as much. Um, it's I believe it's Minnie. I f I forget the story right now, but I believe it's Minnie doing something for Mickey for Christmas or yeah, it's camera. Minnie's a wonderful Christmas time fireworks. So you get in this Christmas spirit as your host, Minnie mouse invites you to take in a sparkling Yuletide fireworks display. Okay. So I'm um, sure at 10 PM starts at 10. So yeah. And I feel like we've always, like the last time we did the Halloween party, we forgot about the fireworks. We lost track of time and we came running up like five minutes before. So um, you can find spots, but it's easier if you get there a little earlier. <laughs> yeah. But then you're losing time. You are, yeah. Uh, I guess it depends on where you want to stand for these fireworks. Still a great show uh, for the fireworks. Um, and I don't have a note. I forgot to look. Um, there is a stage show too, though, right? There is. Um, it is Mickey's Most Merriest Celebration. And it takes place four times during the night with Mickey and his pals. Perfect. So easy to catch. I imagine they're doing one again at midnight. It starts at 1155, but yeah, midnight. Okay. All right. 
Um, cool. Uh, as you can tell, I didn't do as much research on this one, so I'm I'm so glad you're here for this. <laughs> <laughs> we have lots of notes. The Christmas card is always very popular. We are headed down um, to do it on December 1st, and it'll be our first time there. Uh, it's just my wife and I running down there quick for a quick weekend, but it's going to be a lot of fun, and my kids are extremely mad at us for going without them. Oh, well, you can just go around and get some cookies to take back. <laughs> that's what I've told them. I'll bring you cookies. <laughs> when we, We've only done the uh, Christmas party once, and it was um, back when they still – gave you the same cookie at every place and hot chocolate. And so everywhere you went, it was cooked the same like ch chocolate chip cookie and hot chocolate. And I was like, after the second one, you're like, what? <laughs> I'm not even going to wait in line anymore. But I know they've changed it uh, in the past few years where they have different things around the park, which is nice. Yeah. I think there's a snickerdoodle and a sugar cookie and mm -hmm. the chocolate chip cookie. Yeah. Um, that is nice. So yeah, we're we're hoping to fill a bag and bring those back for the kids. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's also some dessert parties that they do during the Christmas party. So if you wanted to add on extra, <laughs> be extra extra into a fireworks dessert party during your Christmas party, they do have some um, different locations for that. Now, I I had forgotten about those, um, and I believe they're another $100 to get into those. Yeah, it varies depending on even really the location you're going, because some are like the Plaza Garden. It's a stand, standing room only location, so like it's $99 for adults and $59 for children. Um, and then there's another one at Tomorrowland Terrace that's $114 for adults and $69 for children, so... Yeah, oh, okay. it's an additional on top of the party. Um, I kind of gathered the sense that the part, the the dessert party, the party within the party, mm -hmm. that they might be more of a come and go all night type of deal, or is this kind of like the dessert party for fireworks, where you come in maybe half an hour before and then go to a viewing spot? I don't believe you can just come and go all night, um, but I honestly am not really sure. Okay. Well, something I know can... you can get there. You get there before the party or before the fireworks, and you eat. There's tables with desserts and fruit and drinks and cider, lemonade, stuff for everybody. And then they, as you know, it gets closer to the fireworks. They escort you to which I guess area you paid for <laughs> the Plaza Garden, <laughs> um, which is standing room only, um, or the Tomorrowland Terrace where you would just kind of stay over there and go out or closer to where the viewing is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I, you know, I haven't paid a whole lot of attention to those because, you know, like you said, like you're taking time away from the party for another party. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a lot more expensive to add that on. So. And a lot of sweets when you're already getting, you know, cookies and things throughout the park. And it's just. Yeah. So definitely something to think about if you wanted to add that on, um, if you really need to, but, um, yeah, yeah. Have guaranteed viewing, I guess is what one of the benefits is, but there you go. Yeah. Um, which we are talking about doing one for our Polynesian trip only because, um, we have somebody that'll be on a, a scooter and she can't stand for as long as it would take to um, to stay in the uh, hub area where we would normally watch fireworks. So we're considering doing the party just to make it a little easier. So there is a new party going on this year. So you know, other than what Disney has told us, we don't have a whole lot of information on it, but it sounds pretty neat. Um, it's called Jollywood Nights, and it's going to be over at the Hollywood Studios Park. Um, it starts November 11th and is running for, I believe, 12 dates. Mm -hmm. And tickets will be 159 to 179 um, It's going to be 
pretty neat. Uh, they're kind of going with the Roaring Twenties Hollywood um, theme, and they want you to dress up like that. Uh, there's going to even be kind of a dance party going on at the Tower of Terror uh, to fit that theme of Roaring Twenties, uh, which looks kind of cool because I think there's going to be even treats available and... Um, I don't know, like, it just looked really neat how they were going to be doing that. Yeah, it looks like it's a fun thing. I love Hollywood um, Hollywood Studios, and the Tower of Terror is my favorite ride at any Disney park, so <laughs> <laughs> super into that, but I wish they would do a Halloween event over there. Oh, yeah, um, that would be cool. But surprise, I'm surprised that, well, I guess we're still in August, but... Every, every date is still available for the Jollywood Nights and the Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. So there's definitely still time to get those tickets. And I would suspect once we get a little bit closer that the Jollywood Nights would would start selling out for sure because it's new. Yeah, you know, usually the first night of a party, it sells out pretty quick. And, you know, having November 11th still available, I think that's kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Um. Another thing they're doing, which is maybe where we got a little upset that we're going to miss it, um, is that they're doing a show in the Beauty and the Beast Theater with the Muppets. Um, we're a big, big fans of the Muppets in this house, and to have them doing a show, <laughs> live show, would be really cool to see. So... Um, that's another item in within that that you can do. Uh, it sounded like there's going to be some other exclusive shows and some really um, neat meet and greets going on. Yeah, I'm excited to see what they actually do, but it's it's hard when they haven't really released a ton of information about it. It is. It's it's hard. I hope people um, go because I want it to continue. Exactly. That's how I feel about it. Um, yeah, we're the dates that we're going to be down there for that other party, um, we're going to end up missing the night that Jollywood would be going on. So we're going to miss that party. But um, I know they're going to have a, a fireworks show going on as well. Um, so you're going, to, you're going to want to pay attention to when that's going on. Um, and as we get more information, uh, we'll try to cover it here on the show too so that you guys can get some more information on it. Um, so beyond the parties in the parks and all the great decorations they have there, um, they do a lot of stuff around the resorts. Uh -huh. um, of course, the big draw is the gingerbread house at the Grand Floridian. Um, I can't wait to see that and buy a shingle. <laughs> um, we like the, I know the Beach Club has the carousel, the little chocolate carousel. Um, mm -hmm. We personally love the yacht club i know everyone loves the beach club the beach club i just love the theming of the, the yacht club um personally myself more than the beach club and when we were there they had a like entire miniature village um set up and they even had like a little operating skyline here like a oh, wow. gondola like it was a you know like a ski resort gondola <clears throat> um i don't know if they still do that, um, it's been a couple of years, obviously, since we've been been to the parks around Christmas time. But I just love all the sculptures that the Disney artists can do because it's just incredible. And I think pretty much every resort is going to have some sort of uh, decorations like i know the wilderness lodge has a giant tree within that gorgeous mm -hmm. atrium they have there um i'm hoping to get over to that that's the one resort that i'm hoping to get to that's not really in the plan <laughs> right <laughs> now but um you know i'm hoping we can get there and see that but yeah the gingerbread house is high on our list and then um the carousel so now i'm gonna have to make sure that i walk over to yacht club when we're there to see if that village is still there. That sounds really neat. Yeah, I have photos somewhere, but it was it was really neat. Um, but I don't think it was made out of candy. <laughs> but 
but it was like, you know, like <laughs> when you go to your grandma's house and there's a giant holiday village set out, it was huge. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, they do that uh, miniature village in um, Epcot. And, mm-hmm. you know, if it's anything like that, I bet it's going to be pretty awesome. It was cute. Yeah. And oh, we didn't even talk about Epcot. Oh, all right. Let's hit Epcot. I, yeah, there's so, so much going on there. Um, personally, Epcot is our favorite park to go to. <laughs> but um, even our kids really like it, which is nice. Um, but they have the holiday kitchens. So that's included. It's, you know, the fest, the festival park. So mm-hmm. holiday kitchens start and... Um, when do those start? Those start November 25th, the festival okay. of the holidays. So from November 25th through December 30th, um, every country has a special presentation for the holidays. Uh, they have the candlelight processional. Which, which I'm ex- so excited to see. I can't wait for them to announce who the um, speakers are going to be this year. Yeah. And then, you know, they always do the little scavenger hunts where you can you know pay and find different things around the park um i think they do olaf olaf has hidden some, that sounds right to me yeah. either olaf or olaf has hidden some things through the park um and i think even the new guardians of the galaxy they have a holiday overlay so play different seasonal jams during the ride awesome yeah um that is one stop we're going to be making along the way so um yeah, like I said, I'm excited for the Candlelight Processional. My wife is worried that I'm going to get bogged down listening to all of the um, storytellers mm-hmm. along the way um, mm-hmm. because I want to see them. Uh, but I I think I need to pick and choose because she wants to do the cookie stroll and hit yeah. those kitchens you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the cookie stroll's fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, She's going to have so many cookies. Yeah, I know. It's going to be a cookie weekend. <laughs> um, yeah, so Epcot's another great stop along the way. Um, so I think finally we've come to Disney Springs, huh? Uh-huh. Um, they do have some decorations up, but the big attraction there would be the Christmas tree trail. Yep. In the past, it was like a single trail over near the world world of Disney in that section, and you could just kind of walk through and see all the trees when COVID came along, they changed it and they spread it out all, all over Disney Springs and they've left it that way. Um, the last couple of years, I don't know if they have plans to go back. I have a feeling it's going to, it's going to stay spread out like that. I mean, it's nice to kind of spread out the crowds instead of having everybody funneling into one little area. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, it, it'll it take you a little longer. Well, maybe it won't. I don't know. To walk around and see them than if you were just in that section because you don't have to wait in the line. Yeah. And you'd think they'd want people spread out because the more you are there, the longer you're there, the more money you spend. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. <laughs> <laughs> the more you see. <laughs> uh, but the trees are all themed to either a movie or a character. It's always pretty cool to see those different uh, trees all decorated up. Yeah. And you can even meet Santa Claus at Disney Springs. Yes, you can. And after Christmas Day, that week after Christmas, it changes to Santa Goofy, doesn't it? Yep, Santa Goof. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's so awesome. I, I can't wait to see these. I've never been there for Christmas, so that's exciting stuff. Well, is there anything that you need to add um, around these holidays? Um, I would say if you can get to Disney World, um, for one of the holidays, Halloween season, Christmas season, do it. Um, it is going to be a little busier than some of the other times, but it's worth it. There's so much to see, so much holiday cheer, uh, Halloween cheer, and it's just it's just something that I would recommend. But plan ahead because if you try to do it last minute, you can, but you're just not going to be able to see everything that you want to see. Yeah, that's that's a big tip is, 
you got to have an idea of where you're going to go and what you're going to do to try to see what you want to see. So, well, yeah, and that's kind of really any any time because there's so much. I mean, there's there's just so much to get going on. So, if you're there for, are you going to see don't eat donuts? You know, there's probably 20 different locations that have Christmas themed donuts. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, so you just have to figure out what you want to experience ahead of time. So you're not so stressed while you're there. Yeah. And, and that's such a good point any time of year. Um, and I think that's, you know, really where you come in, right? Like using a travel agent like you um, is the best way to do this. You can help the anyone plan. Yes. And we have a team um, of agents. So, I mean, honestly, we probably have someone at Disney almost every day of the year. And when things change, they bring the information back and we can update our documents and make sure our clients have the most up-to-date information when they go for their trip. So I was looking through our our documents from last last year. So our last Christmas documents, um, our holiday happening documents for all the resorts. I mean, it, it, we, it lists everything. I mean, maybe not everything, but we have sections for every resort and every park. And so use a travel agent, if not me, someone else. Um, it's just, I wouldn't recommend winging it <laughs> on your own. Um, cause you're going to miss out on a lot of stuff. Yeah. And you're going to get frustrated too. And having, uh, Melissa in your back pocket is go- really going to help out. Um, so if somebody was wanting to book with you, how would we go about getting a hold of you? Um, the best way is going to be email um, at mpilgrim, P-I-L-G-R-I-M, at themouseexperts.com. Or uh, I have a Facebook page, which is Melissa Pilgrim with Ears of Experience and the curated travel collection, because I can do more than just Disney, but normal, a lot of my clients are Disney people. So um, those would be the two best ways to contact me. And then we can chat about your next vacation. Perfect. Um, And, you know, we do have a page on our website dedicated to you, Melissa, that um, has your... uh, intake form on it and so if somebody wants to go to our website which is www.milesfrommainest.com slash sponsors you'll find melissa's information there um great way to get a hold of her so we are also out on facebook and instagram at miles from main street you'll find us there uh come on out and uh join us uh we also have the community group melissa you're in there and you uh would be willing to answer questions out there as well correct Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So come on out and uh, let's talk with Melissa. Let's talk. If you guys remember Topper and Tom, they're going to be putting more inf- more stuff out on the community group. And, uh, you know, it, it's really great seeing their information coming out there as well. So um, I do want to highlight, again, the website. You can find Melissa's info. Um, but also, we got an email from Van Obi-Wan, uh, and he was able to send that through our website. We also have a voicemail line that you can reach there. Um, it's just down in the bottom right corner. You'll find a button with a microphone. Um, click on that, and you can leave us a recorded message, and we'll play it on the show. But like we always say, some live close. But others don't. So let's talk about it. We'll see you next week on Miles from Main Street. Bye.